So in the previous video, we looked at how you can take a certain function. Doesn't matter what kind of function you start with. You can start with a, a weird graph like absolute value of x plus x to the negative 2. That's a cool looking graph. You can start with that sort of a graph here. And then you can translate it by making a new function that is related to your old function. And what we learned is that when you add it on the inside, it moved left. When you subtract it on the inside, it moved right. When you add it on the outside, it moved up. When you subtract it on the outside, it moved down. And that those plus or minus on the inside or outside did the same thing, even if I changed what the original graph was. Even though I make it even more squiggly, the minus 3 on the outside still just pulls the whole graph down by 3. Okay, so that's the big idea. We're not looking in this unit at one particular type of function. We're just looking at what happens to any function when you do a certain thing to the equation. How does that change the graph that we see? So that was all translating, sliding things left, right, up, or down. What we're going to look at now is how could we stretch things out. So I'm going to take my original graph, and what we've done is we've done all the possible pluses and minuses, so we're going to try to multiply. Let's see what happens when I multiply by a number like 3. Now, the black graph is a similar shape to the purple graph. It is higher up. What I'm going to do is simplify things a little bit and take away some of these nasty-looking squiggles. Get us down to something that's a little bit simpler, like this. I look at the black graph compared to the purple graph, what I can see is that at any given point on the purple graph, like this one is negative 5 comma 5, there is a buddy point that is three times taller on the black graph, negative 5 comma 15. Over here, when x is equal to positive 1, just as a random example, when x is equal to positive 1, the purple graph is at positive 1, the black graph is three times taller. Okay. Both of them have an origin point of 0, comma 0. If I change my parent graph to something else, you can see the same relationship. Every point on the black graph is three times taller than the purple graph. And when we use the word taller, we are actually meaning more specifically, it is three times further away from the x-axis. The y value is of the black graph is the purple graph's y value multiplied by 3. And in fact, that's exactly what the function tells us here. We take our old y value, called f of x, we multiply it by 3. If I multiply it by a bigger number, I get even a bigger stretch. If I multiply it by a number that's smaller than 1, like 0.2, then I'm getting a compression, where it's getting closer, because 0.2 is smaller than 1, and so just like when we were doing exponential functions, multiplying by a number between 0 and 1, We'll make a smaller graph, multiplying by a number bigger than 1 will make a bigger graph. So just like how if I wanted to translate it vertically, I can add or subtract on the outside of the function. Here the same thing is true. If I want to dilate it vertically, I can add, not add, I can multiply by a big number or by a small number to make it dilate vertically. Just like with translating, doing things inside the parentheses move things left or right. So let's see what happens. If I multiply by a number like 2 on the inside of the function, it didn't get taller or shorter. All that happened to my function was it got narrower. The x values uh, got twice as close to the y-axis. And then I multiply by a number like 5, it's 5 times as close. If I multiply by a number smaller than 1, like 0 0.5, now it is half as close to the y-axis. Sine of x is a nice function for this because it has what's called a period, where it's how long does it take to do a full wavelength. And when I multiply by 0.5, that means that I'm completing half of a wavelength on my black curve, half of a wavelength in the time that it takes my purple curve to complete a whole wavelength. If I change that horizontal dilation to a 2, 
how my black curve completes two full wavelengths in the time that it takes my purple curve to complete one. We don't use the word wavelength for more complicated functions, this one, but you can see that the same thing is true, that every point on the black graph is twice as close to the y-axis as the corresponding point on the purple graph. You can choose um, a particular example, like this point right here, um, 0.55 and 1.99. If I go 0.55 times 2, I get 1.1. So I know that this point right here is going to be 1.1, if I can get it to land on it, and 1.99. So you get the same y value on the purple graph when you are twice as far from the y-axis as on the black graph. If I change this to 0.5, now it is twice as wide. But to summarize, if we want to do a vertical movement versus a horizontal movement, we do different things. If we want to do a translation vertically, we take our x, our f of x function, and we either add or we subtract a certain constant. So that moves it up or down. If we want to translate something horizontally, we take a certain constant and we move it there. And actually, I'm going to make a small change here because it sort of works backwards of the way you would expect. That minus moves it to the right and plus moves it to the, to the left. Okay, we just talked about dilations, ways of stretching it. And so for vertical, what we have is a certain number times the function. And for horizontal, we have f times a certain number like this. And again, there is sort of a backwards thing that's happening with the horizontal movement where 0.5 doesn't make it uh, narrower. 0.5 makes it wider. You might have expected narrower because when I do 0.5 on the outside, it makes it shorter like that. 0.5 on the outside makes it shorter. 0.5 on the inside makes it wider. One thing that is maybe sort of a dumb way to remember that is that that is how it works when you stretch your own arms out. If you stretch your arms up, you are like multiplying. That's like a vertical translation if you stretch them up. And as you stretch your arms up, they also get narrower. And multiplying on the inside tends to make your functions narrower. And vice versa, if you stretch your arms out, like if you're stretching them out, they also tend to get lower than if you have them in like this. So kind of a silly way of remembering that idea, but um, maybe it'll help. So please comment if there's anything confusing, and I'm happy to do some more explanation.